Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back. Moving on to the next section in this unit, we're now going to be talking about rational exponents. And before we get into specific examples, thought I would give an overview of just generally how rational exponents work, what they even are. Now, rational exponents, they come from radical expressions, square root expressions. So for example, square root of 16, or maybe like the third root of eight. Now we know the square root of 16 is equal to four, third root of eight is equal to two. Well, we can actually rewrite these in an exponential form. So the square root of 16, we can rewrite as 16 to the power of the half, or the third root of eight, we can rewrite as eight to the power of one over three. So if you take 16 to the power of a half in your calculator, or eight to the power of one over three, you would get four and two respectively. Make sure you put that exponent in brackets because some calculators, if you don't put it in brackets, they'll just take the 16 to the power of one, right? Which would give you 16 and then they'll divide that whole expression by two and the calculator will give you eight. So make sure you're putting those exponents in brackets in your calculator. But uh, when you plug both of these in, you should get four and two respectively. So in general, basically, the x root of anything is just going to equal that expression under the root to the power of 1 over x, right? So when you just have a square root by itself, there's like an imaginary 2 here. So basically, the square root of something, they're asking what number multiplied by itself twice will give you what's under the square root. If you're taking the third root of something, what number multiplied by itself three times would give you what's under the square root. In this case, it would be two. Two times two times two is eight. Or the fourth root would be four times, right? So if there's just a square root by itself, there's like an imaginary two there. That's why it ends up being 16 to the power of a half. So there'd be a two here, it'd be eight to the power of one over two, right? So the fifth root of something is the same as that something to the power of one over five. So that is the general rule that's gonna be used in this entire section. You may wanna write that down. Now, a couple of things I want to make note of, uh, more so a review from uh, previous grades. Basically, if you remember, odd square roots can have negative numbers, right? But uh, even roots can't. Here's what I mean by this. So we know the third root of eight is equal to two, but the third root of negative eight is negative two. Right? It gives us an answer. If we take negative eight, the third root of negative eight, or we take negative eight to the power of one over three, right? Convert it to exponential form, it would give us negative two. Now, the uh, square root of 16, or actually, you know what? Let's just use the fourth root of 16. So the fourth root of 16 would give us two, but the fourth root of negative 16 would give us an error if you try that in your calculator or you take negative 16 to the power of one over four, right? So this does not exist, D and E. So odd square roots, so whether you're taking the third root of something, fifth root, seventh root, ninth root, et cetera, et cetera, that can give you negative numbers. You could take an odd root of a negative number, can't take the uh, even root of a negative number. So you can't take the square root of negative 16, the fourth root of negative 16, sixth root of negative 16. That would always give you an error, right? So even roots, answer always has to be positive. Odd roots, answer could be positive or negative depending on if uh, that expression under the root is uh, positive or negative. Um, another thing I wanna mention is uh, there's usually names for these two forms here. So this here is like a radical expression or a radical form as we know, right? Both of these here. And then these two 
our uh, exponential form. So sometimes they'll give you exponential expressions and ask you to convert them to radical form. The exponential expressions will have these rational exponents, or they'll give you radical expressions and ask you to convert it to exponential form. We're going to be doing videos, examples, where we're converting from one form to the other in future videos. Uh, another thing I want to mention in this overview video, uh, this thing is not as important. You may not see it come up as much, but I think I should mention it. So if you remember from radical expressions from the previous unit, if you have like the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, well, you can multiply those. So that would be the square root of 20. Well, same thing happens if you have a number here. So you're taking the nth root of something. So for example, the third root of 4 times the third root of 5 would give us the third root of 20. Right? But both of these have to be the same. So the third root of 4 times, let's say, the fourth root of 5, we can't get a simple expression like that. Right? It wouldn't be the fourth root of 20 or the third root of 20 because both of these are not in line. They're not the same. Right? So both of these have to be in line. And then you can just keep that nth root in your answer. Right? So if this was like the fifth root of 4 times the fifth root of 5, answer would be the fifth root of 20. So those uh, radical expression laws that we went over in the previous unit, they carry over to uh, nth roots as well, as long as those nth roots are the same. And that's pretty much it. I'm just going to go over a bunch of examples in the next few videos, get you comfortable working with uh, rational exponents.